Lord, sometimes I choose to live my days without you, going through the motions of my life. But then I remember times when I was near you, all those precious moments you were close to me. And I'd be such a fool to stay away from you. Nothing in this world compares to you. Good morning on this Easter Sunday and what a beautiful week we have experienced this week on the run up to what is the greatest day in history. And also today is the only day of the year where it's sort of seen as acceptable to have chocolate for your breakfast. But as we know that is not what this day is all about. And I'd like to start this morning with a children's song that Suzanne has put together that reminds us what this day is actually all about. Over to you, Suzanne. I'm a bunny, and it's not funny How people think Easter's just a time for hunting eggs I'm a bunny, listen, Sonny Easter is all about J-E-S-U-S the stone was rolled away on that first Easter 
is all about J-E-S-U-S After Jesus rose An angel in white clothes Gave the women the good news He's alive! Peace be with you! I'm a bunny And it's not funny Now people think Easter's just a time for hunting eggs I'm a bunny Listen, sonny Easter is all about J-E-S-U-S, so I hope you kids are smart, uh-huh, I sure do, and you ask Jesus in your heart. Easter's not just about eggs and new clothes, Easter's when God's only son arose. I'm a bunny, and it's not funny. Sunny. Easter is all about J-E-S-U-S Oh, Easter is all about J-E-S-U-S Thanks for that, Suzanne. That was a really fun way of um, showing us that today is really all about Jesus. And with the children in mind, I have got the great privilege to announce some exciting news for King's Heart Church. We as leadership have now employed Jenica Carter to be um, our new children's and young people's worker. She will be working alongside the already established team and Suzanne um, to start a brand new adventure for our children. And to help us just to get to know Jenica that little bit better, I have put some questions to her that she's going to be um, sharing the answers to now. So my favourite scripture is, of course, the ever popular Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And it was such a great verse and such a great reminder for my life that I actually got it tattooed on my foot. And so I always have it there as a reminder that whenever things are going wrong or things get frustrating, I just kind of look at my foot and remind that God always has good plans for me. My favorite biblical hero, actually, I have two. Both of them I loved when I was a kid. I remember reading their stories and just wanted to be like them when I grew up. And so the first one is Esther, just based on her faith, her unwavering faith, her and her courage really inspired me and still inspires me. And also when I read Solomon and how he prayed and asked God for wisdom. And then he you later see that when he's judging the case of the two women and the baby. And I remember reading that and being like, God, like I want to have wisdom like Solomon. And so I remember praying that. So that's why those are my two favorites. Yeah, the reason why I'm excited about this new role is, well, first of all, I love working with kids. I'm passionate about them. I think they're amazing. And secondly, I'm honored to be able to pour into this next generation to speak over them their identity in Christ, to show them that there's no junior Holy Spirit, that at any age they can lay hands on the sick and see them healed. They can pray for people and see them miraculous. Like, there, there is no junior Holy Spirit. And so I'm really excited to introduce all that and to walk in that journey with them and to see them grow in Jesus and know who they are. Thanks for that Jen, that sounds so exciting and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the children and the young people are going to blossom in this new season. Thank you. Now before I hand over to Brian who's going to be sharing with us on this Easter Sunday, I would like you to get um, some bread and wine together as we will be um, taking communion during Brian's talk. Um, I always think communion is this amazing reminder of everything that Jesus has done for us. And I've been on a journey with worship this year. I've been taking the time to look through the Bible and find all the places where I can see um, things and circumstances that please God. Because at the end of the day, worship is things that please God. And one of the things that I've, I've picked up on as I've been reading through the Bible is that God really takes pleasure um, in our remembering. We can see in the Old Testament um, 
you know, Passover was a huge thing um, to God. And there were strict rules that God would lay out for the for the Israelites to follow. And I also um, see in the Bible how God would speak to Moses and say, why, why have they forgotten so quickly all that I'd done for them, taking them out of Egypt? And then in the New Testament, we see how Jesus tells his disciples to take bread and wine in remembrance of him. And so what I'm going to ask is that after Brian speaks, I'm going to play a song. And in the song, it says, just look at him, just look at him. And what I want you to do is to just picture Jesus's face in that moment and take that time as an act of worship to just spend time gazing into his face and remembering what he's done for us. The fact that, yes, he sent his, um, his son to die on the cross and then be resurrected so that we can have a deep relationship with him. And also all the things in your life, those times that he's come through for you, just take the time um, during that reflection just to be gazing into his face and to be telling him everything that you remember because that does really please him. So I'm now going to hand over to the father of our house, a man that I have a lot of respect for and is incredibly wise, Brian Smith. Good morning. Before we start, can I invite you to uh, get prepared, ready for later, uh, some wine and some bread that we can share together. Uh, but when you're sitting comfortably, uh, we'll again begin our Easter talk. From the seven wonders of the ancient times to later discoveries, ingenious inventions and remarkable achievements like conquering Everest, inventing flight, splitting the atom, producing nuclear power, advances in medical science, including the effective vaccine against COVID, digital communication, and so much more. These things are all unbelievably amazing, impressive, wonderful, and can be hugely beneficial. But I suggest all of these pale into relative insignificance compared to one unique and outstanding event in the history of mankind. We believe that Jesus, Son of the living God, is the Saviour of the world. He came to earth, he died, he rose again. Hallelujah! It's that special event that we declare and celebrate today. Despite having spent three years with Jesus, hearing and seeing him teach about himself as the Son of God and demonstrating supernaturally that the kingdom was at hand, the disciples remained blind to many of the truths that were being unfolded before their very eyes. They'd come to pin their faith and hopes on this Jesus as the promised Messiah, and the betrayal by Jesus and the capture of Jesus, the mock trial and the crucifixion, had led them totally bewildered and disillusioned. Peter had distanced himself with denial of even knowing the Lord, and the others, their faith tested and shattered, who knows where they were or what they were thinking. The brutally treated and now dead body of Jesus had been put in a rock tomb. Very early on the third Easter day, that would be the Sunday morning, a group of women went there with spices for embalming. In the group were Mary Magdalene, Joanna and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Oh, here they are now. Let's let them tell us what has happened. When we got to the tomb, we discovered that the huge stone blocking the entrance had been rolled aside. So we went in, but the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was nowhere to be seen. Gone! As we stood there, stunned and perplexed, suddenly two men in dazzling white robes, shining like lightning, appeared above us. We fell to the ground, terrified. Wouldn't you be? The men in white, perhaps they were angels, spoke to us. Why would you look for the living one in a tomb? He is not here, for he has risen. Have you forgotten what he said to you whilst he was still in Galilee? 
the Son of Man is destined to be handed over to sinful men, to be now to a cross, and on the third day he will rise again? Suddenly we remembered his words. So hastily we left the tomb to break the news to the eleven, and to others, what we had seen and heard. He is not here, but is risen! So, having heard this, what was the disciples' reaction? It made no sense to them, and they didn't believe us, said the ladies. But Peter jumped up and ran all the way back to the tomb to see for himself. Stooping down, he looked inside. It was empty. There was only the linen sheet laying there. Staggered by this, he walked away dazed and wondering what it all meant. In Luke 24, there then follows the story of the two of the disciples later on that same Sunday going for a long walk, Jerusalem to Emmaus, probably about seven, although some say 17 miles distant. Their minds, still closed to the truth, dejected and mystified, they talk about the recent events and a stranger, turns out to be Jesus, joins them, although God at that point prevented them from recognising the Lord. After telling the stranger about the curious happenings with cynicism and disbelief, Jesus, in the words of the Passion Bible, retorts, Hey, why are you so thick-headed? Why do you find it so hard to believe every word that the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for Christ, the Messiah, to be experience all these sufferings and then afterwards to enter into his glory? Then Jesus unveiled to them the revelation of himself through the scripture. He started from the beginning and explained the writings of Moses and all the prophets showing how they wrote of him and revealed the truth about himself. It was getting late and they stopped in a village for something to eat. Jesus broke and shared bread, causing the weary travellers' spiritual eyes to be opened and they realised their companion was indeed none other than the Lord Jesus. Then Jesus vanished. Stunned, they looked at each other. Why didn't we recognise it was him? Didn't our hearts just burn with flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. They hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples who were already together and overheard them saying, It's really true. The Lord has risen from the dead. He's even appeared to Peter. Then the two disciples from Emmaus told the others what had happened to them. Jesus suddenly appears right in front of their eyes. Startled and terrified, all the disciples were convinced they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus says, hey, be at peace. I am the living God. Don't be afraid. Why would you be so frightened? Don't let doubt or fear enter your hearts, for I am. Touch me. See my wounds. Look, I have a body of flesh and bone. Oh, and give me something to eat. Remember the words I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you everything written about me would be fulfilled, including all the prophecies from the law of Moses, through the Psalms, and the writing of the prophets, they would all find their fulfilment in me. At that point, he supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive some revelation. Jesus gives a resume of the events. He gives the Great Commission to tell the Easter story around the world, telling them, you are my disciples, you are my witnesses. Witnesses? Witnesses of what? Most importantly, of the death and the resurrection. And Jesus promises the gift of the Holy Spirit with mighty power of heaven falling on them and wrapping around them. Later, Jesus ascended. While he was still speaking out words 
of love and blessing, the Bible says, they were overwhelmed and ecstatic with joy. So ends Luke's Gospel, and the Passion Bible adds a footnote, saying, The one who walked with Jesus and his friends on the way to Emmaus wants to walk with us. May we never walk in sadness or unbelief, for Jesus has risen from the grave and lives victorious as the living God in resurrection life. May you pause here and rejoice, believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and the only one who will bring us to the Father. Trust in him alone to save you, and you will spend eternity with him. And now if you can take your bread and wine, I remind you that Jesus told us to take bread and wine, not just as a remembrance of his death, but to celebrate his resurrection. And although this morning we are physically apart, let's share bread and wine to express our togetherness in him. And we say and pray, thank you, Jesus. We pray for all who are sick and unwell, that you will reach out to them with your love and your healing. So we take bread and wine together. So what does this Easter mean to us? How should we respond? The gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus came to show the unlimited extent of Father's love and to destroy the works of the enemy. He died and rose again. Passion Bible, Romans 5. Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place. And there is still much more to say of his unfading love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now made righteous in my sight. We share in his resurrection life, rescued from sin's dominion. The cross confirms and the resurrection proves God's love for us. The resurrection of Jesus as the ever-living ever-loving Son of God, is pivotal to our faith and hope for eternal life. At the cross, the enemy was conquered. Without the resurrection, our faith would be hollow and meaningless. The gospel would not be good news. No resurrection, no victory, no salvation, no forgiveness, no healing, no reconciliation, no love or grace, only a religion no better than others. But in fact, established by the testimony of more than 500 witnesses at the time and countless thousands since, we know that Jesus lives and because he lives, by faith we too live. Hallelujah. He's risen indeed. The resurrection and everything leading up to it was prophesied in the scriptures, which came uh, in Jesus for fulfilment. By looking back and seeing the unfolding of Father's master plan, we see both the cohesion and the authenticity of the scriptures and the truth of the prophetic story they convey. We have complete confidence and trust in our covenant-keeping, promise-fulfilling God and his word. Jesus stressed the importance of all scripture and it's time for the church, all churches, to get back to preaching the word of life. It's time for Christians everywhere not to tamper with or seek to dilute the word of God, but to teach and believe what is written and to live by it. Faith without works is pointless. When teaching or preaching, the early apostles were keen to present Jesus Christ, once crucified, raised from the dead, on the third day and now ruling in majesty and glory. In mission, they demonstrated his resurrection life and power and love. 
when the risen Saviour appeared to his disciples, he told them to go to all nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn to him. The Father's promise, that's the Holy Spirit, would come enabling them to do the Lord's work in his name and in his power. Have we taken the benefits of the resurrection perhaps without also bearing the responsibilities that go with it? If we offer an anemic gospel, we should not be surprised if the church appears irrelevant and unattractive. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us for everyday living in the grace of God and to do the works that Jesus did. Once the fact of the resurrection dawned on the early disciples and they got over their initial unbelief, they almost exploded with excitement and passion and it didn't take them long, empowered by the Spirit, joyfully to spread the good news using the message and the method taught by Jesus, teaching, preaching and demonstrating the story. The Passion Bible in telling Luke 24 has this phrase, he even appeared to Peter. Judas has the reputation of being the betrayer, but Peter's outright denial ranks not far behind. The implication perhaps is that Peter was not just one of a crowd, but the risen Christ singled him out for a personal resurrection encounter. Either way, Peter was not excluded as well he might have been, having disassociated himself from his master, doing in fact the very thing he vowed he never would. But remember how Jesus had spoken to him about a deepening love relationship. Peter, do you love me? Jesus does not give up when we miss the mark, nor does he condemn or severely reprimand, but pours out his love and his grace to honour and equip us his children, those he has cho chosen for great things. When Jesus gave his lifeblood and declared, it is finished, the temple veil was torn apart, achieving unrestricted access to heaven, an invitation to intimacy, entry into the very presence of the Lord at the throne of grace to draw more closely. The old covenant was at an end and the new covenant was beginning. The early church comprised an amazing collection of ordinary born-again people living in a transforming process, impacting the community, doing and seeing extraordinary things because of the resurrection of Jesus and the outpouring of his Spirit. Great grace was present and all who gathered in unity witnessed amazing signs, wonders and miracles of healing. This Easter message is not a repetition of a relic from history or church liturgy, but we believe it to be a declaration of great impact and truth, a word for today. The current pandemic has illustrated how vulnerable and frail we all are. The peoples of the world need to know there is real hope and purpose in a God who loves and cares for all. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 3.10 prayed, I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus more fully and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. We pray that same prayer today, which I'll repeat. I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus more fully and to experience the overflowing of his resurrection working power in me for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for your gift to us. Have a good day and God bless you all. We see you on the cross And you're beautiful, God Blood speaks a better word. The bread, your body, 
Father, I just thank you for what you did on that cross, Lord. You sent your only son to die so that we can have this relationship with you, that all sin and things that we are ashamed of can now be gone. And Lord Jesus, I just I just want to thank you for all the times in our lives where you have come through. Help us always to remember, Lord, that you turn things round for good in absolutely everything. And let us always have that thankful heart, Lord, to give you give you the glory of for what you've done for us, Lord. I pray that in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Brian. That was great.
and I'm now going to set you your challenge of the week. This week, I'd like you to each day spend some time in reminiscing with God. Just think back through through your life and all the times that he has really been there. You could have felt him there. He's come through for you. And just, yeah, have a reminiscing time together in remembrance. Um, that will be your challenge of the week. Um, I just have a few notices now. Um, first notice is this next Friday, the, yeah, next Friday coming is um, the men's social. So if you are a man and you would really like to get involved in that, please look back through the newsletter. The details um, to get onto that Zoom are in there and that will be Friday. Also on Saturday, there is going to be um, a quiz um, which you can participate in in a team with. So if that is something that you're interested in, then please do let Helen Dean know and she will be able to um, give you the details. You need to come with a, a team ready to be able to participate. Um, also, I just wanted to um, highlight to people that to take a look at our social media pages, um, we have got a Facebook page. And we now have an Instagram page as well. So if you are not following us on Instagram, please do find us. And we've been posting different things um, throughout the week. Some of the things is just reminders for stuff, but some of the stuff actually we'd love to see your interaction and getting involved. Um, for instance, Saturdays, we um, do a children's challenge and we'd love to see the children get involved in that way. Fridays, we have a um, a joy friday where we just post things that bring us joy so yeah do take a look at our social media pages on facebook and instagram and get involved um if you if you want to so um i'm going to um finish now but do please join us in the zoom after the service that will be being posted in our chat box as we speak now and so we can carry on having fellowship together I hope everyone has a lovely Easter weekend. Enjoy a time with um, your family and friends and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Early Sunday morning, just like Jesus said, he broke the curse of sin and death and he rose up from the dead. Forever.